guys, Betsy here with Unique Paper 15. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, I hope you're subscribed. If you're not, please do. That'd be awesome. Just wanted to get that out of the way. I hope everybody's doing well. If you're new here, my name is Betsy. I do art, hauls, crafting, anything basically I can get uploaded um, from my craft room, but I like to do everything, even quilting. Um, just tons of stuff so go ahead and check out some of my other videos if you want just to see kind of the things I have done and can do and anyways let's get into this so uh, today obviously from the thumbnail there is a scrawler box opening and I just got it I have not opened it it is still sealed so let's get into it so I'm assuming this is May's box May 2020 the year of the century right it's kind of funny like I'm here in like the tippy tip tip of South Florida and we just got an alert that we have a tropical depression out there and then we're alerted that this could be possibly a very bad hurricane season so it's a running joke with everybody of like what's next good lord what's wrong with this box I'm just gonna have to rip 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 into it because it's just not it's not giving right there we go all right, here we go. Let's see what we got. So yeah, the running jo joke here in South Florida is like, what's next? Like seriously, is it gonna be a zombie apocalypse? It's just everything is <laughs> crazy right now. Okay, I'm going to keep it kind of zoomed in so you guys can see. I'm excited so far. Oh no, we have a broken tip of something. That's okay, it came a long way from Europe. Fabric Estelle, uh, I don't even know how to say that. It came from Germany, or no, I don't know where this came from. Uh, deep Scarlet Red. So, oh my God, I don't even know if I have a sharpener that can sharpen that, let's see. Um, they actually sent me one a while, ooh, a while ago in one of my other little boxes. Let me move this. Let me see if I have a sharpener that can fit that, because it's a fat pencil. Let's see, okay, no, that's not gonna fit. Let's see. Let's keep going. Maybe there's one in here. Who knows? But that's like a really wide pencil. All right. So Scarlet Red. This one says Walnut Brown. Very nice tip. Um, I don't know if you guys can see how big this is. Like it is a really wide pencil. <laughs> so I'm going to see though if there is because I remember one time they sent me this sharpener and I'm looking for it right now because I had it around here and I don't see it, but if I find it, we'll, we'll try to use it and see if that's the type of sharpener that we need. Dang it. You know, it's like you always know where something is until you need it. Murphy's Law, but that's okay. Um, oh, found it. How about that? Okay, so this is the one that they sent me and no, this is not gonna work. Nope. Okay, let's cross our fingers they gave us one in here. All right, next one is emerald green. Very pretty, you guys. These these colors, just to look at them, are very beautiful, very vibrant. And then this last pencil type thing is a Durant, and this is from England, and it's an HB. So if you guys know about the system there, H means hard and B is soft for the lead, and this is an HB. So this should be interesting to see. Um, and then a paintbrush from Pro Art Polar 31 White Nylon. Ooh, I love anything nylon. So this is that brush. If you guys want to take a look at it, and it's got a nylon bristle head. Very nice. I'm excited about that. All right. Uh, let's open this guy up. Well, he's already ripped open. It looks like so just dump it out this is the candy of the month it is in it says eclair by walkers um banana split okay we'll put that over here in the sticker this month oh look how cool it looks like a fairy you can see her face so we're gonna do the placement of it isn't that cool love it love it love it all right we're gonna look at that later because i don't want to give it away what it is because i don't know uh, fabric is still, this is a fabric still box. Okay, watercolor marker, and this one is called 
phthalo blue 110 and it looks like we have a nice big like not bullet but you know bullet brush tip on this end and this side is a small bullet like a typical bullet size we're going to test those colors out in a minute and then yellow so the yellow is called let's see here uh cadmium yellow so very typical same thing brush tip and in these uh, caps really post well my goodness and so there's the yellow so we have the cadmium yellow and the phthalo blue so i also like it that there's little um if you can see here like these little plastic things so it doesn't roll around on your desk it actually just stays stable that's nice so this is like a box of really thick stuff okay a scrawler zine i love making zine books i have one right here that i made and sent out but this is cool okay so it's telling us about the con uh the contents um you have the bullet number and the brush i mean bullet tip and the uh brush nib and then they even talk about the sweet treat that's in here we haven't gotten to the paper yet the chunky pencils easy to handle and helps prevent hand fatigue that's nice the new paper sticker the thick graphite core of the door and pencil and the synthetic brush that we looked at and then we haven't gotten to this so let's see who our featured artist is this is so cool so let's go ahead and see if we can place it oh it's not the same size so it's not going to work this time um i love these goldfish the way they have them like just pink and yellow and and very whimsical do you see that i love the watercolor effect about that all right so let's find out who this is Ange angelica schult um she's an illustrator from germany um she's been an artist since she was very young she started drawing around 14 and she loves magna and disney um she started studying media design she continued to draw and doodle and now experiments with a variety of uh media and substrates uh let's see watercolor colored pencils gouache and um she loves her art and posting on instagram she follows many other illustrators to grow and she likes to encourage others to create this is really cool i like that um the pieces that come in my art boxes i have a special section for them and actually some of them i frame and hang up so this is like art for me thank you angelica and then the last thing in the box is the a5 watercolor paper it's 300 uh, gsm cold pressed and it's eight sheets so this must be pretty thick paper that's not eight sheets it says eight sheets let's count it that can't be eight sheets okay one two three four five six wow seven eight it is it's so thick when you look at this book you're like there's no way that's eight sheets it's so thick and this is actually a scrawler box uh white label pad so that's really cool and then here is all the information you need if you want to do um some social media and they actually do have the you know art challenge that's all you have to do is do the hashtag scrawler challenge if you want to go back and see some of the past boxes if you're interested in it of course i'll link scrawler down below now let's get back to our scrawler zine and see what the challenge is all right so now that we finally saw the paper here's angelica herself very cool um <clears throat> this is new this is new this thing um, to tell a little bit about the artist typically this is what you get this little thing right here and I'm sorry if you can hear my dog panting in the background okay oh this is April's box wow they are short on the draw because um, it's like middle of May okay so uh, the Faber-Castell watercolor markers the Faber-Castell watercolor pencils oh so those chunky things are pencil uh, watercolor the Durant sketching pencil sorry pro artist synthetic round brush and then we got the scrawler box watercolor paper cold press so the challenge is called daydreamer so this is going to be our challenge right there and you can see that that is what we're going to post on the hashtag scrawler challenge and it says each box provides you with a selection of art supplies da, 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 da. and so daydreamer is something we have to do here are this i love her art 
I'm definitely going to start following her. I like this one right here. Look how just like loose and whimsical and like free spirited her pieces are. Very talented. All right. So now they're telling us a little um, bit about the products and some tips. I like these things. I've recently got into reading the tips on anything, websites, blogs. People take the time to put the tips in there, listen to them. It's like from one artist to another, hey, try this. You might really like it. Other things to try. Uh, try experimenting with different swatches, blah, blah, blah. If the color's too bright for your liking, try adding a small amount of water. Oh, shit. Okay. Let's see. Scrawler Gallery. Okay. These are just other artists that... Oh, my God. My son would love this one on Rick and Morty. He'd love that one. He'll probably draw it now that he sees it. So just past artists. And that's really cool. Um, and then... Oh, wait. Oh no, forgive me. This is the March 2020 scholar box, what people ended up doing. What was our prompt then? Uh, Imaginarium. Wow, that's not what I came up with. The Imaginarium I came up with was really way different, but I love everybody's interpretations here. Okay. Um, an update, eco scrawling. Uh, the new box, better service, that's true. Um, the box changed, it became very, very thin, which is nice, and that's good. And let's see here. Um, and something that they're also changing about the box. Let's see here. Unfortunately, we live in a time where one and a half of the natural forest acre is destroyed every second to accommodate our agricultural fuel mining and industrial development. These forecasts are vital to survival as a species as they create around a quarter of the oxygen in our atmosphere as well as just, uh, stabilizing our climate worldwide and housing over 50% of our land species. At the current rate of deforestation should continue, it will take less than 100 years to destroy all of the rainforest on the earth. So it is more important than ever for us to be making every step we can towards a greener, more sustainable way of living. So they have new paper stickers versus like vinyl plastic um and then they're going in to telling you about everything they're doing to help save the trees and blah 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 blah, which is really awesome i'm not, not going to bore you guys with that but if you want to go to their website and check it out i'm sure they have a mention of it over there too and i guess that's the last page so um let's play around a little bit okay so daydreamer now i'm not going to obviously do my challenge piece right now but what i am going to do is take a sip of my coffee and play around with you guys um for a few minutes if you don't mind I got this new cup. Um, I, my son uh, is recently in the hospital um, for like a week, just a week ago. <laughs> and so I was down there for, well, actually over a week, sorry. And, um, oh, wait, sorry, pause on the story. We never got the sharpener. Oh, man, we're going to have to go old fashioned and get a knife. Um, so anyways, when I was down there, I needed something to lift my spirits. And one thing I need to do each day is drink coffee. I could give a shit about eating. Seriously. Like, that's not a big deal. People have to tell me to eat. Hey, did you eat today? <laughs> like, that's my thing. But coffee? So I, one of the things I did on the second day, because I was so stressed out, is I went to the Starbucks that's there on the hospital campus. And they're open 24 hours a day, which is awesome. And I got myself a nice Starbucks mug to brighten my spirits and I did and I'm still using it because I fell in love with the mug little side story there okay you guys let's address the pencil in the room we need to figure out a way to get this guy sharpened I'm thinking I'm thinking I know I have a really big sharpener but I think it's downstairs Okay, wait guys, pause right there. I'm gonna try to find it, I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. I could not find that sharpener, so I had to go down to my makeup table and get this like one I got from Walgreens for like eyeliners and stuff. So it's only one I have that has two different sizes in there. So let's try it. How funny. I wonder if they thought about that, but I'm sure they just expect people to use like a knife. All right. Oh, see, now I don't know if I'm able to get a fine tip on this with this thing. Let's see. I, mean, I guess it doesn't matter if it's a fine tip when it's watercolor. I can move it around. All right, let's just play with that. Good enough. I'm turning the light on here. 
sorry if that LED gives it like a weird look. Um, I'm gonna put a piece, this book under here just in case. I don't want to bleed through. Um, all right, so let's play with some of the products that they gave us. Okay. Let's sketch something. Um, I'm gonna have my water here, and I have my towel here. Okay. Let's see. Let's try to do a face. Yeah? Okay, let's try to do a face. Are you guys one of those people that can like draw and talk or no, like don't draw and talk because I have to focus on my piece. What is your what is your thing? Are you a non drawer talker? <laughs> non sketcher talker? Um uh, it depends for me. Like, I'm so used to doing art alone. You know, it's funny. Um, James Luke Burke, who's one of my all-time favorite artists, I love to follow. Not just for his art, but for his personality. He's so real. Um, uh, he had has made some comments before that, you know, he is alone all the time doing his art. And it's, it's a very lonely thing. And the community is the only thing he really has because you know he sits home all day and basically does art for work and i get that like so when i'm in my craft room which is often every i mean it's every day um i usually don't come up here till nighttime but um you know i'm by myself and you know my son does his thing my husband does his thing and i get it you know it's like you're by yourself but i'm by myself because i kind of choose to and also people don't come in here a lot but when my husband or my son do come in and they want to mess around and have fun it's 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 such a different environment i absolutely love it when when my husband and son or friends would ever come in and craft with me or do art i absolutely love it and yes and so i'll talk then all right so i'm just we're going real basic here guys i'm not gonna do like a picasso piece we're just going to do something simple and play with these colors and see how they they flow and play with each other. Yeah, I actually do have to graph it out because I don't want to get it wrong. And that's something I would do. So, like, I, I know where it goes, but some reason putting that graph, that the marks there demarcations they still help me isn't that weird i don't think so very particular about my noses though my noses will be like the bane of my piece like it'll take me if i don't get it right you know if i don't feel like it's a possible nose so i'll play with it later because i i can literally just go mental on noses I think everybody has like that piece for them that, you know, there's something that for them has to be not perfect, but it has to be so decent or else they can't move on. And for me, that's, that's um, my noses. All right, so I'm going to put in eyeball here. Nice big eyes, because I'm gonna do something like a, you know, this is gonna be a whimsical type of sketch. All right, and then we can do a pupil because she's looking that way. Let's not make her cross eyed, Betsy. <laughs> Pay attention, okay? Okay, she's looking over there. All right, and we'll put a little hint of an ear here. Now we will do. Can you guys see this okay? Sorry, I should have probably come in more. Forgive me. Can you guys see what I'm doing? There we go. Maybe you can zoom. Sorry. So I'm just gonna do something real simple here. So we know it's a human. Okay, you can't see her ear because you know she's got her head tilted. And then we're gonna do some fun hair. 
Like maybe we could give her, oh my gosh, they grow in the hair. I mean, they grow in the art piece has piggy tails too. I was gonna say piggy tails, um, cause I'm thinking fairy. We're gonna give her like a little pixie cut then. You know, it's gonna come in like, like a pixie cut. So let's do like this. Okay. This is my vinyl eraser. I tell you guys, I just love these vinyl erasers. They're my favorite. All right, so now, um, I don't like the way that shade is there. Let me just redraw that shade. Okay, so now these are the pieces we are given, right? Okay, so we have to use everything in this box to make this piece. So, so far we have used the carbon pencil. So next we have all this. So let me grab, I'm trying to think of what I'm gonna do here. All right, I have like a little ceramic tray here. So I need to clear out an area so we can do just this. Okay. So I'm going to clear this out. So we're not cheating with any of the residue that's in here. Well, I think that's like uh, embossing paste stuff. All right. Beautiful. All right, so now we are good to go. So I'm just gonna turn my tray here so you guys can see it a little bit. I, mean, I guess it could come out a little bit. There's no harm in that. All right, so uh, first things first is we're just gonna have to go in with this brown because she needs to have skin, right? I mean, I don't have anything to outline this in like black pen or anything like that. So we're legit gonna have to do everything with this. So. I'm gonna start here and sketch lightly. You uh huh, I am. I love you. Love you too. Did you need something, honey? No, just want to know about you. Okay. And I'm gonna go here because, regardless, this will be the darkest shadow. All right, so let's use our new brush. And I'm gonna, oops, where's my. So it's like a, it's like a red brown. Let's see here. Okay. So now I kind of, I know I'm learning the way that these things move. Um, they're not big movers yet, but maybe I don't have enough water. Maybe I should use a water brush. No, I can't use a water brush because they gave me this. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm just gonna try to paint right off the pencil and see if that is any different in application. So I'm gonna come right to the pencil and grab my pigment. And let's, let's play. There we go. Much better. Now let's see how fast that sets compared to being able to move it around. Because if that stays that dark, I'm gonna have my work cut out for me to blend it And I do move my piece a lot um, for directions, and I encourage you to do the same. Um, just to, you know, get the angle that you like, or to be able to move the pigment that is, you know, comfortable for your hands. And also, when you look at pieces from different directions, you sometimes see different things. And at least in my experience. Like, oh, I didn't realize, you know, the lips look like that from there, or the eyes really are uneven, etc. Okay, once we start adding in all the other color, though, you're not gonna realize how brown she is. Now in this, they made her really pink base. You can see she's very pink. Um, I'm going for something else. All right, now I'm gonna pull some more pigment off, but this time I'm gonna pull it off and I'm gonna play with it here to just, Water it down somewhat, dilute it. 
All right, because remember that tip that they gave us was, if you have too much pigment, <laughs> water it down. I mean, I'm sorry, I guess that could be not, you know, basic for everybody. That was probably wrong of me to say that. It just, I don't know, it seems like that's common sense, I don't know. But you know what they say about common sense. Okay, so I'm just gonna put some shadowing here. And this is just very, like a very whimsical type of drawing. I'm not trying to be realistic. All right, so we've got some shadowing going on. And now what I wanna do is I kinda wanna put in some yellow into our skin. And then we'll add some pink. All right, so keep doing a little shadowing here. All right, so now let's start playing with this, this yellow. Um, I'm going to put it in this first before we mess with this, just to see how it plays. Whoa, that's opaque. All right. And I'm just gonna grab a little of it. Yeah, that's really opaque. Let me mix it in with the brown a little bit. All right. There we go. I think we're onto something. Okay, I do like the way that this pencil and this marker blend together. It's very seamless. There's no problem. You can't tell that one's a dry base and one's a wet base. It's, they both look fine. All right, so I'm just gonna keep coloring. You guys can watch me and we'll chat. So I don't know where you guys are in the world, um, but lately, you know, things are just kinda, there seems to be two teams about, you know, this whole world pandemic thing. Um, and I don't want any comments or, you know, like arguments down below. I just, I hope that wherever you guys are, whatever team you want, team you're on, you're, you're happy and you're healthy and everybody in your family is doing well. Um, down here in South Florida, that's not so much the case. Um, you know, we're kind of going through something right now with this whole thing. So hoping that, you know, by June-ish, we'll be getting out of it. So we're still kind of on the lockdown here. I think we're one of the last states besides New York that's gonna be let out for recess. But nonetheless, I haven't stopped working. Um, my company is good enough that we're able to work from home as long as we still were able to generate business, which has been really, really challenging. Um, I don't know what you guys, you know, do, but you know, I work full time and I'm not gonna lie, it's been hard, you know, and unfortunately, very sad, we've had to let go of people from our company that have been with us for, you know, 15 years, and it's just, it's sad, you know? Um, so wherever you guys are, I hope you're doing well. I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope that, you know, this has not personally affected you and your family um, in any tragedy, it just, you know, all that. But I don't wanna kill the video with sadness. Just wanted to wish you all well. All right, so Scrawler Box I'm liking, um, but right now my fee, I mean, today I'm really liking it, um, but as of subscription boxes, Scrawler Box and Upgrade are my favorite two boxes right now. I almost got a Tonic Box yesterday, um, just because I saw they had a really cool geometric stamp in this month's box. Um, but I didn't, you know, I'm trying to shy away from like the Simon Says Stamp and the Hero Arts and the Stamps of Life and all that just because I'm such a sucker for it. And I end up buying all these, you know, kits and I end up getting like one or two things in there that I, I like and use. So rather than that, I just wait and see what comes out in the kit and then I go and buy it all a cart. Okay, so we have the you know the base of her let me turn this led off maybe that'll help we have the base of her face done oh, 
you can see that. You know, I kind of think the LED light's better. Sorry, guys. You can see more. All right, I know her nose looks funky there. We're going to fix that with the hair. But she's tilting her head. Um, so that's what this is right here. And yeah, I probably should have put it more over here. Okay, but you see that's what I get for not moving my paper around. All right, so to the red. Now I'm going to do my first, like, direct color on here and then paint around and see how that works because this is so chunky and remember we had to resharpen it so I didn't get a really fine tip on this one so I'm really coming in with the water here to just uh, dilute that out and so it can have more of a watercolor look and find the areas that it wants to go in her lips so I don't want to give her too much of a pout, but I definitely want to insinuate that, you know, she's young and female with that little pout there. Let's see, that one piece of that crayon or pencil is just sticking there. It does not want to come over. That'll bug me. It's like a piece of pigment right there. I'm just gonna have to make it part of her lip line because if not, that'll eat me up. Okay, so just basic lips here, little pout, and I'll put some shadowing on the outside. All right, so cute red. I'll come in a little bit if that helps. And now let's play with the other ones. All right, I think I wanna do, let's see, let's give her some funky eyes, yeah? All right, so we have the yellow and the blue and the green that we haven't used yet. So I'm going to start off with the yellow. Here we go. Well, actually, we still have some yellow here. But, you know, what we haven't done yet is we haven't drawn directly on the paper and then colored yet. So let's try that. So we're going to do directly on there. And then we're going to do with the blue directly on there with the the brush nib. And then I'm going to come in with this green. I know she looks like a crazy zombie right now, right? It might look a little better in a second. Let me see if you guys can. Because I don't know how big this looks on your screen, wherever you are. All right, let's play. Let's see what we can do here. Because I'm trying to get like that multicolored eyeball. You know, like really pretty eyeball is what I'm aiming for. And I don't want to color too much in the pupil just because I don't have a black pen in this kit. And I don't know if that, that charcoal pencil or whatever, the graphite one, will cover up all that paint. I sure hope so. Trying to follow my sketch lines here the best I can, but I've kind of painted over some of it. Okay, so one thing for sure is that blue marker that we drew around the pupil, it's not moving that much. Like it's really holding its ground. So learn something there. I'm glad I put it towards the pupil in case I want to really shade it out. Come in with a thirsty brush here and just pick up some of this moisture and then let it kind of find its way. Now while those eyes are kind of settling in, um, I'm going to start on the hair. So we're going to give her like a pinkish hair, reddish hair. And I'm just going to basically trace what we did here. Nothing's nothing like difficult, just very basic. I'm going to give her a hairline like this. I feel like I'm back in kindergarten, just like <laughs> scribbling. But it's fun. Okay, 
So now, um, sorry, I'm gonna come out a second so you guys can see what I did right there. Because her hairline kind of comes off the top of the page. So it's not like the screen's cut off. That's legit the top of the page. All right, so I'm going to just flood the open area with water and drown it out. So that when I come in with more, it gets that really loose, loose, loose effect. But by drawing that, that's going to set my boundary so my, my water won't fall out of that, if you will. Like it's, it knows where it has to stay on the playground here. Okay. Let me come down here. All right. Did you guys see that new um, special on Netflix, Hangar One? Um, oh, I'm so excited to watch that. Like that's like, I'm really into sci-fi stuff. And, um, I kind of like conspiracy stuff too. Like, I'm, you know, I'm not like a conspiracy freak. Um, but I dig it. Like just the thought of like, Oh, what if, you know, but it's not like I sit there and, you know, worry about stuff like what I hear on these conspiracy shows for the next, you know, five days. I just think it's so cool. If like, what if, like, what if president Roosevelt really did have a secret meeting with aliens? <gasps> donk, donk, donk. You know, it's kind of cool to think about. All right, so do you guys notice that when you, wherever you draw the original line with these things, it kind of, it holds its pigment. It doesn't really wash out. Um, so keep that in mind when you're using these products that, you know, your first lines down are really going to stay there. So you better, better want them there. So let's see here. We're just giving her a super light wash of red hair. And then, you know, obviously later we can come in and add some shading and some other details and, and whatnot. I'm going to pull this in more on the side of her head. All right. Like I said, we're going to do more details later. All right. So now we're, oh, did I spray my nail? Mother of her. Okay. Now, um, all the, her eyes are drying. Let's give her something down here. All right. Let's see. I guess let's go for the blue. Okay. Cause then she's got red hair and green eyes. So this time I'm going to put it in this tray and I'm going to do the flood thing here and then grab the blue. So she's just got a little shirt on like that. Now let's come in here, grab all this blue. Oh, it blooms nice. Okay, that was a shocker. Didn't expect that. One of my um, new watercolors I really like is Cor, Q-O-R, um, for its blooming properties. You know, when you drop it in there like that and it just, psh, I love that. Because yeah, when it dries back, you never know what it's gonna look like and it always looks cool. Like there's never a time that after it dries back, it doesn't look cool. They're just, it's awesome every single time. And I like that with loose water coloring. I'm not more, I'm not so much into a flat wash type of look. I like, you know, like bloom away, separate and do what you do. Show us, show us all the wonders of your pigment. So I'm in for that. All right. So she's got her little shirt on and we'll let that dry back. Now it's, a, I want it to be a little more spotty. I don't want it to be so perfect. So I'm just gonna slap these little blah, 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 blah. Okay. So let's let that dry back. We can add a little more blue to her eye. We're gonna come in with her eyes being dry and a wet brush. And now we'll kind of flood them out, dilute it down and see how it absorbs. Okay. So I can, first thing I wanted to recognize is that the paper is warping a lot. So I wanted you guys to see that. Okay. It's warping. Let me just put it on the side view. It's warping a lot. 
Now I'm going to see, obviously, if that dries straight, but just to let you guys know that it's not holding itself. But that, oh no, we got blue there in our hair. Not the end of the world. Okay, so now let's um, come in and try to like do her eyebrows and some, uh, you know, little details. And all I have is this pencil. I don't have a pen, so I don't know how I'm supposed to really do, you know, my detail work. But we will figure it out. Okay. She's got these, like, funky, like, comic eyes, so I have to follow that shape. All right. And I did want to reshape that part of the lip and make it all the way over here. Okay. And maybe later I'll put some type of detail on the shirt. I don't know. See, that's the thing. I, I keep touching the blue shirt. I'm getting pigment elsewhere like a kindergartner so I need to stop with that all right um I'm gonna do some shading here on the nose and around her eye that okay I don't want to touch that wet water like that so I'm trying to stay away from it all right so let's see here is there anything else here we have not really used I don't think so let's come in with the brown on top of those eyebrows and see how that looks if that's like acceptable or these two just don't play together no it's okay all right so let's try it here then Okay, so this lays down pretty heavy, so be light-handed with that. I'm going to carve out her chin a little more. Like that. Now that I kind of know where her angle is. And I'm going to cut into here to kind of thin out her face on that other side like this and so we can bring that hair in if we want so I'm just wanting this to dry so I can come in and do the eyelashes so I'm going to take my heat gun if you guys don't mind and I'm going to speed it up Sorry guys, that paper is soaked. Like, whoa. I don't know if you guys can see this, but check that out. It is just soaked. Okay, and I mean, I did not like kill this paper. All right, let me put a clamp on here because it's getting so, you know, like warpy. I don't know if I'm gonna get like, a straight eyelash. Well, we'll try though. All right, let me do this other side. with one of my wonder clips, Let's see if it fits. Yes. Okay. Um, while I'm drawing these, I'm going to tell you guys about my son. So my son recently um, has got into cooking. He's always had kind of a thing for it, but as of lately, like he started watching these Gordon Ramsay um, shows. I'm sure you guys know who he is. He has all those ch cooking challenges and things like that. And it was like legit in one day, in one day he was like I'm gonna cook and he mom can you order this 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 um, ingredients sure no problem so we instacarted the groceries and they got 
here, I think it was like later that day or something. And he made like five dishes, like, oh my God, what was the first dish? He, I'm trying to think of all the dishes he's made, but he has made um, ribeye fajitas. He's made all from scratch, banana bread, sushi. Um, he's made these like blondie brownies. He's made this Alabama barbecue chicken. He makes this rice. I mean, I could go on and on and on, but it was like in a day, in a day he decided to do this and he has not stopped. His schedule's a little off because, you know, he was in the hospital and, you know, they come in and poke and prod at you every 30 minutes. But, um, so he's been, you know, sleeping to like three something in the afternoon. And then when he gets up, you know, he gets up, does his thing, and then it's straight off to cooking. And he just has not stopped. And I'm so proud of him. And so we're, you know, very much in support of that. Um, so my husband and I were talking about we should really take him down to, there's a, um, a very well-known col culinary college here in South Florida that people from all over come to actually be a student at. So um, when this whole coronavirus scare is kind of behind us, we're going to take him down there and just do like maybe a little campus tour so he can see, it's a beautiful campus, um, what type of, you know, programs they have there because they have everything from hospitality to, you know, uh, being a chef and, and things of this nature. So um, I'm so proud of him, but my... One of the reasons I'm telling you guys the story is I've just never seen somebody jump into something so fast. Like when I started, you know, art, it was very slow, very slow, you know, back when I was like five. And then when I became an adult, I would add more things to, you know, my arsenal of tools. And then I did go through a small like stint of, you know, buying a bunch of stuff when I had a little bit of money. But I always liked art. I always have done it. There's never been a time that I did not do art. And so, um, sorry, I let me grab my little eraser here. And um, so it's much different than, you know, waking up one day and deciding, you know what, I'm gonna be a fashion designer. And then before you know it, like your name's all over billboards. Like it's, it's funky. He just decided that this is what he wants to do. So he's doing that. And he's also doing animation um, for video game design. So he started doing this online school class thing where they teach you how to actually design the video games, the characters, you know, the plot and all that. And so part of that is he has to learn to be a better sketch artist. And so every day he's been sketching every day now art is obviously nothing new to him I've mentioned you know that to you guys before um, art definitely runs in our family but you know he's really circling the whole art uh, just temperature you know from from cooking to animation to sketching uh, now he wants to get into designing cool fonts I mean, so I'm just so proud of him. You know, it's it's funny. Some days we, or sometimes we just, we can go through a majority of our life not having a clue what we want to do. And, and then all of a sudden you, you do something, you see something, you hear something. You're like, that is what I want to do right there. Like, because it calls to you. Just like, you know, uh, medical and nursing called to me. Like, I just had to help people. And um, my son, I think this is his calling. And... It's so cool to watch it just develop in front of your eyes. It's really, really cool. So um, that's where we are right now with, you know, my son. He's about to be 20 years old. Oh, my God. He can't even believe it. He's like, he can't. He's just like, there's no way. There's no way. And I'm like, oh, my God, there's no way. There, You know, so it's hard to believe. <laughs> He's almost 20 years old. Feels like the other day he was turning 16 crazy crazy I'm like an old lady now all right let's go in for her pupils and see if we can maybe cover up that pigment let's see I really need some pen don't I let's see it's okay you know what if I was on a desert island and uh, 
I didn't have a pen. But yet I needed to sketch this girl's pupils to get off the island. I would have to do my best, right? All right. So let's see. We're going to do some shading under the lids. I'm going to, because I want her lids more down here. That was more of like a, there we go. I didn't want her eyes so open. I wanted it to look like she was kind of looking up. If that makes sense. All right, so I'm trying to see here. Like her, it's weird the pupil isn't showing as much on camera as it is in person. Like she's got a full pupil here, but it's not really showing. Let's see. I guess you can kind of see it now. All right. All right, so now I'm just going to shape her eyes out, actual eyeball. And her nose. And if you want, we can get a couple eyelashes down here. That tear duct. Tear duct. And some eyelashes. I don't want to give her too many, but there she is. She's just supposed to be looking up. I'm trying to alter that. All right, so that is it. We did, um, we played with the pencil, the Dorrance sketching pencil. We played with the red fabric cell for the hair and the lips, the brown fabric cell for her skin and her eyebrows, the green one um, for her eyes, the yellow for her eyes and her skin, and the blue for her eyes and her skin and her shirt, and the paper, oh, and the brush. That's what we used. So, fun, right? Um, I don't know, you know, this paper, I'm just gonna give it a chance to, I don't wanna make you guys wait, but I'm gonna give it a chance to dry back. It might dry completely flat and be fine. I'm sure I can press it. Um, but very cool, right? I like the, I like the, um, and I'll probably sketch on her later, but I like the the fact that you can use these um, as water uh, color pieces. So very neat. All right, guys. So that is my scrawler box. If you guys are interested, I will leave the information down below, but you can go to hashtag scrawler challenge and it's spelled a little different in case you've never seen it there. Right there it is, scrawler challenge. If you guys want to check it out, maybe get yourself a box. All right, stay safe, guys. Come back for more. Subscribe if you're not subscribed. Please give me a thumbs up. It really helps me out. And uh, no matter what you do, come back.